analyzing the opposition of flesh and spirit in Galatians, theological scholar Oliver O'Donovan explains its historic importance in Christian moral thought and outlines differing interpretations over time. The tension had been rendered by theologians and interpreters in various ways, from an inner moral struggle, to a cosmic clash between good and evil, to a stark choice between servitude and freedom. O'Donovan argues these interpretations do not fully embrace biblical context, which often uses flesh and spirit to describe a spectrum of experiences and violate Paul's insistence on viewing them as an indication of God's work in conversion. He suggests moving beyond the anthropological or sociological and toward practical reason and the history of salvation, where the flesh and spirit exist in an application-oriented understanding. Also, this opposition isn't just a metaphor, but a guiding framework for Christian moral philosophy, and is deployed primarily to distinguish between life lived according to human self-interest and life lived according to God's will or spirit. It is used to contrast the law of Moses, that is the Old Covenant, and the law of Christ, that is the New Covenant. The terms flesh and spirit refer to two contrasting ways of life and decision-making horizons. Choosing the spirit represents an embrace of freedom and love that shapes a morally fulfilling life. The resulting choice is neither opposing aspects of human nature nor opposing supernatural forces, but a fundamental decision between self-centeredness and transcendence, or between living according to human norms and living according to God's spirit. Moreover, engaging with past interpretations, O'Donovan critiques late 20th century commentaries which conceive of a dualistic struggle between the cosmic and the divine. In contrast, patristic readings from the 4th and 5th centuries do not view the flesh-spirit division as cosmic or a division of inner natures within the human. They lay responsibility for moral weakness completely in the soul's failure to direct the body appropriately, viewing the opposition as an ethical one rather than a cosmic one. From this outlook came assumptions that the tension was anthropological, stemming from ancient thought on functional order and soul-body hierarchy. Early commentary such as Augustine's contends that the tumult between flesh and spirit lay in the soul and was the result of a failure of human agency. Furthermore, biblical history furthermore presents the opposition of flesh and spirit in a historical hermeneutic way. Like the synoptic evangelists, Paul sees love having primacy as the architectonic structure of all moral laws, the hermeneutic principle in applying the moral law, which unifies it and gives it coherence. This understanding corresponds to the apex of moral revelation in biblical history, where Jesus acts as the final and authoritative interpreter of God's law, proposing the law of love. In summary, the opposition of flesh and spirit holds significance in both history of salvation and practical reason, serving as the unifying principle behind all Christian ethical thought. In addition, O'Donovan's discussion of Paul's writings, specifically in Romans, Corinthians, and Galatians, is a critique of the insufficiency of the law for eliciting authentic, joyful obedience to God's will. Given its contextual relationship to the structures of the world, Paul labels the law as both weak due to human weaknesses and as a veil for God's glory. Meanwhile, in Galatians, the rule is described as being tied with the elemental things of the world. To unravel this complexity, commentators Jerome and Chrysostom are referenced, offering interpretations that suggest a reading of the law as an early pedagogical tool and as corresponding to worldly reality. Further, O'Donovan suggests that Paul presents worldly elements as both diverse and stifling, creating a cycle of uncoordinated demands, yet their coherence is established through the principle of neighborliness. Paul also presents a transformation from immaturity to adulthood within these elements. O'Donovan explains that the elements are presented in their simplest form, alphabets learned by rote, and are connected through service to the higher end of completed compositions. This convergence of elemental and elementary life with the command of love gifts spirit to otherwise disjointed elements. This spirit further strengthens the interpretation and direction of life under the premise of faith, freedom, love, and hope. Besides, O'Donovan explains that moral teaching was an integral aspect of the early Christian church, where contrasting elements like life, law, faith, servility, freedom, and flesh, spirit were consistently aligned. O'Donovan emphasizes the notion of virtues as existing beyond the scope of law. Paul's focus was not on reconciling law and spirit, but on stressing their opposition. Arguments from Chrysostom and the tradition of Western translation are both utilized to support this position. Last but not least, flesh in opposition to spirit symbolizes instinctive reactions to constant disconnected demands, 
not just of bodily needs but also of societal competition, tradition, fear of nature, and an unpredictable future. The primary implications of O'Donovan's analysis include the shaping and diversity of large-scale moral landscapes, the ethos of diverse cultures, the projection of liberation narratives across moral life through death and resurrection, and the Spirit's authority of interpreting moral law in the frame of mutual service, love thy neighbor as thyself. The transnomian interpretation of moral law under this new liberation ethics moves beyond the reactive subservience or rebellion towards an active shaping of history, nature, and society in partnership with God. In conclusion, O'Donovan analyzes the historical significance of the concept of flesh and spirit in Christian moral thought, debating against the traditional readings which depict a cosmic conflict or an inner moral struggle. O'Donovan insists that these interpretations overlook the biblical context, which denotes the terms as a spectrum of experiences, and Paul's insistence to view them as an indication of God's work in transformation. He suggests viewing flesh and spirit from the perspective of practical reason and salvation history as a framework to differentiate between life according to self-interest versus life in line with God's will. This tension is neither a cosmic one nor an inner human duality, but a key decision between selfishness and transcendence. O'Donovan rejects late 20th century interpretations framing this opposition as a cosmic struggle and endorses patristic interpretations around 4th and 5th centuries that view it as an ethical concern. He also suggests moral weakness lies not in an inner duality, but in the soul's failure to guide the body rightly. According to O'Donovan, biblical history presents this opposition in a historically interpretative manner, with love as the key structure of all moral laws. Paul's writings offer a critique of the law as insufficient for true obedience to God's will, labeling it as weak due to human infirmities, and as a veil for God's glory. Meanwhile, the principles of neighborliness establish coherence in worldly elements, facilitating a transition from immaturity to maturity. Ultimately, this transforms disjointed elements into a coherent basis for faith, freedom, love, and hope. Finally, O'Donovan debates Paul did not aim to reconcile law and spirit, but to accentuate their opposition. He further suggests that flesh symbolizes instinctive reactions to continual unrelated challenges. He believes this opposition shapes moral landscapes, liberation narratives, and the Spirit's mandate to interpret moral law within the context of mutual service, love thy neighbor as thyself.